sugar. You've probably checked it off your grocery list, measured it carefully as you prepared a recipe, or simply enjoyed it when eating your favorite treat. But did you know that every grain in your cupboard comes from a crop that has been the cornerstone of Louisiana agriculture for more than 220 years? An industry with an economic impact of approximately $3 billion. The crop is sugarcane. Historically, sugar is one of the oldest commodities, its value being recognized as far back as 1803. Louisiana is the northernmost point on the planet where sugarcane is grown commercially, which added value to our country's most significant land deal known as the Louisiana Purchase. Not only did this double the size of the nation, but it also solidified Louisiana's status as a state and marked its place in the global economy. Sugarcane's prolific history is fascinating, but the modern day story goes beyond the traditional notions of farming and manufacturing. As soon as the Founding Fathers saw the potential of this crop, they entrusted Louisiana's industry with preserving its legacy. Since 1922, specialized scientists have cultivated, researched, and protected this plant with the encouragement and support of the growers and millers of the American Sugarcane League. It is here in Houma, Louisiana that the United States Department of Agriculture's Sugarcane Research Initiative is housed. This historic home known as the Sugarcane Research Unit became a dedicated research facility in 1923 under the USDA, forwarding the cause a full 30 years before Agricultural Research Service was founded. The program's establishment ensured the sugarcane industry's longevity, revitalizing the fledgling USDA research program. As the USDA's principal sugarcane research entity, it is responsible for both plant breeding and cultural practices, as well as soil and water science that have defined Louisiana's prominence in the sugarcane industry. A few miles from the sugarcane research unit lies the Ardon Research Farm. Here, specialists continue their hands-on research. Planting, harvesting, and laboratory and field work all contribute to the decades-long processes supporting the industry in creating new varieties of sugarcane, improving disease of weed and insect management, calibrating nutrient requirements, and developing sustainable production practices. Our primary mission here at the Sugarcane Research Unit is to meet the needs of the stakeholders, the sugarcane industry here. We have a wide range of disciplines here to meet the various needs of the industry. We have nine, what I would call project leaders. We have three projects, which in the jargon, uh, is often referred to as CRIS projects. Uh, one is the breeding CRIS. This particular CRIS project has three scientists assigned to it. This unit was requested to be organized back in the early 1920s by the industry to develop new varieties that are adapted to the uh, Louisiana temperate climate. My name is Anna Hale, and I'm a plant breeder. I'm in charge of the breeding program. And specifically, I'm in charge of what we call basic breeding or the germplasm enhancement program, where we use wild species that are related to sugarcane and we look at traits of interest in those and we breed them into sugarcane. We'll make a hybridization and we take those offspring and we select them and then we cross the best of those offspring back to some more sugarcane. And each time we cross it back to sugarcane, the sugar levels come up and we maintain the trait of interest in it. And it's a 20 to 30 year process before we get a commercial return on that. I came to the United States of America, 1984. I'm focusing in genetics, and uh, sugarcane genetics also appears to me. Sugarcane is a, a very tough crop. You know, what I try to uh, contribute to the sugarcane breeding program or pathology program here is to develop or even trans technically transfer some useful tools to guide, you know, the, the, the breeding program. 
My name is James Todd and I'm the commercial breeder. And my job is to develop new varieties for Louisiana. Louisiana is a unique environment for sugarcane anyway, because it's a, a late temperate where we have to breed sugarcane that can produce a lot earlier than the rest of the world. For instance, we'll have a, we'll start our harvest in September and then we end ours in December where some will start in October and continue on all the way through May, like they do in Florida. So we have to develop sugar, commercial sugarcane varieties that have high sugar content early. You've talked with Dr. Anna Hale, we, use, we start bringing in her varieties, which have wild material that have been brought into them. We start intercrossing those into the program too, which helps us, helps us to gain some of that extra cold tolerance and extra vigor for retuning that we need. And it's my job to sort of take some of that material on and make crosses with it and develop more. Uh, we have a second uh, CRIS project that is concerned primarily with crop production and protection. Uh, I actually fall under that CRIS as well as a plant pathologist, but it includes an entomologist, weed scientist, and a, an agronomist who covers a lot of areas such as fertility, uh, precision agriculture in some of these areas. Hey, my name is Rich Johnson and I'm a research agronomist and I'm currently the lead scientist of a project here at the Sugarcane Research Unit that's called uh, Crop Production and Crop Protection. When we plant the crop, what are the different fertilizers we have to use when we get the crop established? Are there other chemicals or other products that we need to make sure we get a good crop? How do we plant it? How deep do we plant it in the soil? How, do we, how much soil do we put on top? How do we cultivate all these different things, get fed into this idea of cultural practices? With sugarcane, it's, it's, it's more complicated than a normal crop. Sugarcane is a perennial crop. So what that means is, you know, we, we plant it once, but we're able to harvest it multiple times before we have to reestablish and plant the crop. So that brings some unique challenges to us We've put a little more emphasis on the fertilization side because that was an area in sugarcane in Louisiana, there really hadn't been too much research done in this area for 30 or 40 years. Based on the work we did, we were able to show the growers that we could reduce nitrogen rates by anywhere from 25 to 30%. We've basically reduced our environmental impact and still maintain yields. So critically important work, and uh, I think it shows the success that we've had. In terms of uh, the research that I'm more responsible for is the pathology. This is the study of diseases of sugarcane. Much of the diseases of sugarcane are managed primarily through resistant varieties. So our project works very closely with the breeders in developing resistant varieties. We have a few diseases that can be managed by cultural practices. Uh, so we uh, work in those areas. Our diseases range from viral diseases to bacterial diseases to fungal diseases. So we cover a pretty broad spectrum, but uh, we have an excellent uh, group that works on these pathology programs. Uh, we're fortunate to have uh, two technicians that combined have over 50 years of, of experience. And this is not unusual for a lot of our projects. Uh, people enjoy working here, they make a career here, and we get the advantage of them um, being dedicated to, to, their, to their work and to, the, to meeting the needs of the industry. So I'm Dr. Hannah Penn. I'm the research entomologist here at the USDA ARS Sugarcane Research Unit. Um, and a lot of what I do is evaluate sugarcane varieties and different control mechanisms for pests of sugarcane. So our biggest one right now that we're looking at is the sugarcane borer, um, and it's been the biggest pest in Louisiana sugarcane, honestly, since we've been growing sugarcane in Louisiana. That destroys the sugar content. In some fields with bad damage, you can have 20% loss of your sugar content. We also have some other hemipteran pests, which are sucking insects. Um, so we have the sugarcane aphid. We also have the yellow sugarcane aphid. Um, and some mealybugs and delphaces that we're, we're kind of looking at to make sure that they don't get too out of control. We have chemical control, which is what you normally think of like insecticides, varietal control, so that the varieties that the breeders are developing, some of them are really resistant 
to the sugarcane borer. We also have uh, biological control. Um, so that one's actually my favorite um, because we rely heavily on the fire ants. We dug up fire ants from the field and we brought them into the lab and we were looking at the biological control. So that way we make sure that we actually keep our fire ants uh, nice and healthy so that way they can do the biological control and prevent the sugarcane borer damage. We can use the behavior and the ecology of these insects in the communities that they're in to make healthier decisions in terms of the plant, but also in terms of people and environmental health, right? So we can minimize cost to farmers, which is great for their bottom line, and then we can make the environment a little bit safer for everybody. And then we have a third project that's involved with uh, natural resources. Uh, this project looks at soil and water relationships, soil health, uh, microbial activity, all of these kind of things. So we have two scientists in that field. One is very much a um, soil microbiologist uh, and another is the plant physiologist. My name is Patrick Ellsworth. I am a research plant physiologist. As a plant physiologist, I specialize in whole plant physiology. The main part of my research, what I'm interested in is understanding how um, below ground affects above ground looking at how um, below ground traits, um, root structure and function affects you know, sugar production. I'm also interested in how plants use water, uh, specifically what factors affect water use efficiency. Uh, and so how much biomass or how much sugar they produce uh, relative to how much water they use. So when we started a research program here, we really were focused on soil health and soil health uh, being defined for us as getting the soil to a level and keeping it at a level to where we can expect um, economically successful yields, but also do it in a sustainable way where we aren't polluting the environment, where we are conserving our natural resources, and again, keeping these soils productive so that the next generation of growers that come along will have access to them. So what we're trying to do is apply what we know will work in a sugarcane system to try to improve management, particularly looking at how can we keep the crop sustainable for the next century. We try to keep the research oriented toward meeting the needs of the industry. The industry is very responsive to our research. They're demanding, they want good research done. Our people enjoy that because they want to know that the work they do is being effectively used in the industry.